As most of you know, this past weekend, actor Paul Walker tragically passed away. Like us, hundreds of you have written in over the past few days wondering about what this means for the future of Fast and the Furious 7, which is only about halfway through filming by now. AMC Movie Talk is a show about movie news, and our job here is to discuss movie news and how that news affects the movies we all love watching so much. The movie's actors and artists, like Paul Walker, pour all of their passion, talent, blood, sweat, and tears into bringing to us. But in discussing where Fast and the Furious goes next, we want to make sure that none of us lose sight of one very important thing. That the tragedy of Saturday's events isn't that Paramount Pictures' latest blockbuster has been delayed and inconvenienced, but rather the true tragedy is a family has lost one of their members. The true tragedy is a 15-year-old girl has lost her father. The true tragedy is a young man who is just entering into the highest point of his success and his career with so much more ahead of him has lost his life. The fact that so many wonder where Fast and the Furious goes next is a great and powerful testament to how much entertainment and joy Walker and his crewmates have brought to millions of Fast and the Furious fans over the years. And so today, we're going to talk about the future of Fast and the Furious as a tribute to how important Walker was to the celebrated franchise and without losing focus of what the real tragedy on Saturday was. Thank you for joining us as we do so. With the tragic passing of Paul Walker on Saturday, several questions arise about the future of the Fast and Furious 7. According to reports, director James Wan and Universal executives held a conference call on Saturday night to begin to figure out what the next steps are. The cast and crew of Fast 7 were on a short Thanksgiving break and shooting was set to resume on Sunday, including scenes with Paul Walker. At this point, it remains unclear when shooting will resume on the film or if Fast 7 will still be able to meet its already Ambiguous July 11th release date. John, if you were an executive at Universal, how would you proceed? There's, uh, there's a few ways Universal can go. I, the way I see it, there's three different directions Universal can go with this, and, and none of them are great options uh, when you're looking at a tragedy like this. Uh, one of the options is just to can Fast and Furious 7. Um, and, and I was surprised, actually, uh, this week, last night, and this morning, reading through a whole bunch of emails that came in, of people suggesting just that, suggesting that, much like the, the Heath Ledger thing, like out of respect for Paul Walker, uh, stop Fast and Furious. That Fast and Furious 7 should be shelved, just end the franchise uh, out of respect for Paul Walker. Um, and, and while I respect where the sentiment comes from, the motivation is respect, and you gotta respect that. I mean, that's, that's great. Ultimately, it's not the right decision to just, to just can the project, um, because, uh, you know, the old adage, you don't want to sound cliche, the old adage, the show must go on. I mean, life continues on. I mean, really, if, if you were working at Ford, Ford Motor Company, and one of the guys who works at Ford while on a family vacation tragically died, you don't close down Ford. You don't stop making cars. You don't stop moving ahead with what you're doing. And also, keep this in mind, too. There are a lot of people uh, who work on Fast and the Furious whose names aren't The Rock or Vin Diesel. This movie production employs hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who are relying on this project for their next paycheck. You don't just stop production. You don't, once again, back to the Ford plant, you don't say, sorry, Bobby, you don't get to work next week because Tim, who worked on the line, died while on vacation. I mean, it, that, that just doesn't make sense. But also, in talking about respect for Paul Walker, Paul Walker was a guy who was very passionate about Fast and the Furious. It was really the backbone, the biggest success of his career, the, the backbone of his career. And he poured his heart and soul and blood and sweat and tears into it. And I don't think the way you honor a guy like that, who loved this franchise so much, is to say, now the franchise is dead. I, I believe the way you honor him is by making Fast and the Furious 7 the best Fast and the Furious movie you've ever made. That's how you honor him. That's how you respect him. So the one option is to shut Fast and Furious down. I don't believe that's the way to go. I don't think it's the way they're going to go. They've already invested far too much and too many people rely on it. And Paul Walker, I mean, it was too important to him. The second option you have is to write him out. Um, if you remember that show, The West Wing, uh, John Spencer, who played uh, Leo on the show, he was like the, the chief of staff in West Wing. In the final season, I think only like three or four episodes before the end of the show, John Spencer passed away, the actor. And so what they did was they wrote his passing into the show and they just said, Leo died unexpectedly. And that's how they handled the show. So that's another option they can do. 
It's tricky, though, because the reports that I've read are suggesting that they were only about halfway, maybe a little over halfway through shooting the movie. And I don't know if that they're in a position now where they can just write an off-screen, unseen death of Paul Walker's character and write that in the movie, or that he just decided to take his wife and their new baby and move to a different country. I don't, I don't know that they're in a place right now where they can write that into the script. They, but they might. I mean, it's, it's an option. The third option uh, that I see is probably the one I would go with, which is, I believe you replace Paul Walker, but you don't start over. I believe you do what, um, I always mispronounce it, so I wrote it down here. The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, if that's the right way you say it. Uh, remember, that was the last film that Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger was in the process of making that film when he passed away. And so what the studio decided to do was, we're going to replace him and then explain why he looks different. And what they did was they got three different actors, Johnny Depp, Jude Law, Colin Farrell, to all step in and replace Heath Ledger. Uh, and then they did put in a plot device to explain why he looked different in every scene. Obviously, you don't make Paul Walker's character look different. You think you just have to replace the actor um, and not explain mm. the, the change of appearance. I think you just go with it. Uh, now, maybe the, there are drawbacks to that, but I think you leave Paul's scenes in that he shot and then just replace him with an actor, preferably a, a friend of his who's an actor that uh, the audience will know and, and, and relate with as well and go that way. Or you can start shooting again, but if they're halfway through, they've already invested hundreds of millions of dollars. I don't know if that's the way to go. It's a no-win situation. My opinion, the best thing to do if I was the head of Universal, bring in another actor who's a fan of the franchise, new Paul Walker, can honor him by picking up his character and finishing the project uh, you know, in tribute to him. I think that's the best way to do it. Maybe I'm wrong. Amy Rose, how would you do it? Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a tricky situation. I mean, first off, I want to pay my respects to the family and friends and everyone involved. Um, you know, great tragedy, great loss. It's, it's, it's really difficult, especially dealing with the tragic way that he passed because yeah. they don't exactly want to kill off his character. It might be a little <coughs> tasteless in this, you know, scenario. I just, it's not really a clear cut scene. I mean, I do think that in a way that my, I would not want them to get rid of the production completely. Um, I read a quote that actually The Rock said about the passing of this and I thought he paraphrased it beautifully and he just said, you know, in order to really pay tribute to his passing, we have to live and love the hardest we can. I read that tweet, yeah. And I thought that was a beautifully, you know, sad statement. I completely agree. It puts the preciousness of life at the forefront again. And, you know, he was so passionate about this franchise, as you stated. So we should not, you know, this is an even more special film because this is his last film. And with his crew that he has been throughout the years evolving with. And yeah. I mean, I think that it would be, you know, all his work kind of wasted if they just got rid of the production, which they're not going to do. So I don't really know the best way to go about that. Maybe it is just as simple as getting another actor to step in there, or maybe they do kill off his character and make him disappear or like go on the road and not explain it. I don't know what they're going to do. Um, James Wan's obviously a very smart director and I'm sure there's so many heads on this because this is a very delicate situation, um, but they definitely have their work cut out for them. And I mean, no matter what they, are going to do, it's not going to please everyone because there's so yeah. many diehard fans yeah. of this franchise. Um, so yeah, uh, they. but either way, I want them to continue with this production because of all the hard work and love that he put into this franchise. And you know, I mean, I, I am very curious to see how it's going to play out, but it's, it's going to be a, a tricky road ahead for sure. Schnepp, you're the head of Universal. What do you do? I would uh, do what Alex Proyas did. I'd say Brandon Lee passed away when they were shooting The Crow. Yeah, right. The Crow, yeah. I thought of that. And I wouldn't recast him uh, with a friend of his. I thought that was, a, I didn't like do the Dr. Parnassus film uh, for various reasons, the, the biggest being the script. But, you know, I thought it was an ingenious way to, like, have different, you know, the different actors play, the, play those roles. I just wish it was a better movie. So, yeah, yeah. But, uh... That being said, I think what I would do is like you can change a lot of the script that he wasn't involved in and give it to the other actors. Just give those lines. I mean, you'd have to rework them a little bit, but look at the cast. It's a giant. It's a giant cast yeah. of tons of talented actors and actresses. You divvy that up, and then Paul Walker, you'd have to do a little bit of, uh, you know, re-recording. Um, have a voice actor play him in some off scene, off-screen scenes on a cell phone. And maybe do some digital head replacement and digital, you know, or use outtakes from the other two movies of him driving. Or, I wouldn't replace him as an actor. I would honor what he's already done. Yeah. And try to minimize his role, 
So, I mean, if they, if they were halfway done with shooting, and since it's a big cast, maybe they got to 25 to 30% of his footage. Maybe they got 60%. We don't know right. how much mm -hmm. of his footage was actually in the can, so to speak. So, I would try to uh, minimize the, the, the aspect of his role and maximize the aspect of the respect of, you know, hey, here's Paul Walker's last, last film. Yeah. So, that's what I would do. Dennis? Uh, yeah, I would, I would personally probably go with uh, your second option of, of writing his character and, and the wife out of the this, this script and work around what they already shot without him and just say, like, those characters decided to settle down and live a normal life and rather than have his character killed off yeah. because then people are going to think about that throughout the movie. And, and I think uh, from what I hear, you know, I was very sad to hear about his, his passing, um, but I'm not going to be disingenuous and say I, I was like a huge fan of his, but I, I was sad that someone who brought a lot of enjoyment into people's lives had passed and also his friend who passed away. And I think that he, from all accounts from people who I've talked to that have that have talked with him, they said he's a really he was a really nice and down to earth really guy. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like he's the type of person that would want the movie to go on Absolutely. because he would want uh, all the the actors and uh, cast and crew and everyone working on it to keep on working on it. So uh, that I personally think that's the way to go is just write him out of of it and, and use what they already have kind of as a template or some some way to like write around it. You know. Um, I was reading a whole bunch of articles on it, and I, I want to point out, this should be highlighted, because I, I, it's not being highlighted enough. You know, Paul Walker, it, when he was in his car crash, he was coming from doing a charity event to, to help the victims of the, uh, of the storms in the Philippines. But as I was reading about more stuff on him and CNN, I came across this great story, this great true story about Paul Walker. He was in a jewelry store, and I, I don't know what he was there for. And there was uh, an American military vet who had just come back from his tour of duty shopping for uh, an engagement ring for his girlfriend, only to find out that the ring cost way more than what he thought. I think it was going to be around $10,000. And Paul Walker was talking to the store manager and says, yeah, he wanted that ring, cost too much. And Walker just went up, gave him his credit card no, to, to the manager, didn't. yeah, oh. and said, you get him whatever ring he needs. Wow. And, and that guy was able to buy a ring for his now wife because of Paul Walker's. And that's just the type of thing, the generosity. He, he did lots of charity. He was a really sweet guy. And really it's just classy. a really classy. And it just adds to the overall tragedy of the situation. All right, let's move on. I think it's the exact reason why the franchise should not stop because the franchise enabled him and his friend Roger, who was with him during the crash, to be able to give back, which was one of the biggest things they both loved to do besides racing and entertaining. True. So I think it's really important that they don't stop the franchise. Agreed. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to AMC Movie News on YouTube. It's free and a great way to stay updated with all the latest movie news and check out our daily show, AMC Movie Talk. Also, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter to stay in the loop for our special prizes, giveaways, and contests.